Right, we've done some things on filling, haven't we? Yeah, we've looked at filling because we've filled the outside of bits. What did we fill it with, Tyler? What type of filler did we use? The outside of the cubicle? Forgot. You forgot. Tony? You wasn't here. Polyfiller. Yeah, we used polyfiller. Have we used any more fillers or is that it? In here, I mean. Yeah, just polyfiller. Okay. So, what we're going to look at today, we're going to look at polyfiller again. And we're going to look at cork. Sometimes when they're stood a long time, there we go, it's off now, it just, just blocks up at the end, it just dries up at the end, so we're off now, look, so that's fine. So we're going to look at cork as well, do you remember what I said about cork when we were talking about fillers in the classroom? Use it for black gaps. Use it for black gaps, yeah, such as edges where maybe frames touch walls, underneath curvings, tops of skirtings, down the internal corners. That's the only place we can use it, okay? Where can't we use it then? Flat surfaces. Flat surfaces, yeah. It's like a rubbery texture and we can't use it on a flat surface because it won't look down. So we can smooth it, then it'll dry and it'll be like a rubber. So we can't sand it. So that's just for any black gaps, okay? And then we've got this one. You remember what was on about fillers? Fun surface filler. Do you remember when we were talking about that one? <laughs> Fine surface. Yeah? Remember we speak spoke about that one? Yeah, what did I say that was used for? Is it over like um when you've got like dates in walls to smooth it off? Like flat surfaces and stuff. Yeah, this this and this are used the same. Fine surface is for what it says. It's for fine little things. Okay. You do the thicker, deeper areas of that. If you're left with things that are really just a small little indentation or a tiny little crack and you don't want to mess about mixing this, then you've got the fine surface filler. Okay. Can't be used on deep holes because it'll just crack and sink. It's quite a hard finish, so you don't need to leave it proud, yeah? What you do is you leave it flush. So flush is different to proud. Flush is straight, proud is where you leave some on to allow for shrinkage, okay? But because it's such a fine surface, it doesn't really shrink, all right? It's no effort to shrink, it's just tiny. So I've got that, and then we've got these beautiful things. Yeah, a few new ones of these. They are so thin. Obviously, you know it's a filling blade because it's thin. But what else are they? Sharp. Sharp. Yeah, extremely. They're extremely sharp. Okay. So just be careful when you're using these new ones. Okay. Different sizes, obviously for different areas. So what we're going to look on here, we're going to decide what areas we're going to use cork on, what areas we're going to use polyfiller on, okay, and then what areas we're going to use fine surface filler on, because sometimes polyfiller is too grainy to actually sit on the surface if it's a fine surface. Fine surface filler is very fine. So, I'm going to look around here. There's a slight gap where you could use cork. See that one there? Yeah? There's not really a massive amount. There's one down there as well. Yeah? There are the areas where you can use cork. Now, when you use cork, obviously it's in a gun. This, this part of the gun, when you pull that trigger, that presses into the actual gun and presses the plastic ring down the tube, so it pushes it out the end of the tube, okay. So it's trigger, like that, off it goes, and then when you want to stop it, you just click that. If you don't do that, it carries on, look, 
because that pressure's still there. So you need to clip that to stop that cork coming out. Can you paint over this, do you think? No. Hmm? Yeah. Of course you can, it's decorator's cork. Oh, is it the decorator's? Yeah, I'm thinking of the silicone one, I? Of course you can, it's decorator's cork, okay? So you can paint over cork. So when you get the cork, all you need to do is So what I'll do, is I'll just do a demo on the side of here, so if you just want to come around here. So if you fill in a gap, I mean this is in a gap, it's more of an indentation. You put in the angle of the cork gun towards the corner. Pull the trigger, and while you're pulling the trigger, just pull the cork down the wall, the gun down the wall like that. When you get to the bottom, so once you've done that, click off. using either your finger or a rag, it doesn't really matter, damp rags are even better. You just wipe the excess off. Like it now. So you can see now that the surface is totally smooth. If you leave anything on it whatsoever, you won't be able to sand it down and it will show under your paint. Okay. So, next one we all know to make polyfiller, don't we? Yeah. A little bit in the middle, we're only going to do a little one here. Little volcano, yeah, like so. Tiny bit of water, much better if we had something with like a spout on. And obviously, mix that together. The reason we use these lids of 10 litre drums of paint is because they've got this nice lip all the way around and just add just add the water really slowly so just a dribble at a time until you've got the correct mixture if you add too much there was someone mixing some yesterday and they added too much then they added more powder and they added a bit more water and they added more powder and by the end of it they had a mountain a mountain of filler and then once you got to that point, make sure that you blend all the way through to get rid of them little pockets of dry polyfiller. Okay. Then, that's basics, we'll work off two blades. Get rid of that cork. Now we're looking for any sort of deep holes here. Deep holes are anything that looks particularly black when you look at it. So this is a massive one, this is the knot. But we're okay putting filler in this now because it's sealed and it's primed. So we can put, just press the filler in, make sure it's got into all the corners. A bit like, has anybody done them plaster moulds? You know where you get them rubber mould and you put the plaster of Paris in? Anybody do them as a kid? No, just me and you, I mean. <laughs> yeah, and you have to get it to all the little corners or else you get bubbles of air. That's what we're doing here, we're getting all the corners. So I've filled it, now I'm just gonna leave it proud. But that doesn't mean say I've got a big lump on it like that, yeah, because that's far too much. And what you're gonna have to do is there, rub down forever, create loads of dust. So you just leave it a really fine layer on the top there to allow for shrinkage. So any knots need filling, like that. Any sort of like defects in the wood, such as this. Any nail heads or nail holes. Like that. Again. So you're going all the way around like this. This one here has had um, a hinge in it. So what we're gonna have to do there is just try and build it up. What we would maybe do another time with these, if you've got a hinge, is use two pack. Yeah, but we don't really need to get that out at the moment. So we won't be using it on here. It's quite industrial, but it would absolutely 100% stop that coming out and shrinking. Okay, but we're just going to practice with polyfiller for now. Okay, sometimes you can't leave things like that proud because 
try and leave it proud, it falls out. So you have to build it up over time. And that's where your fan surface comes in. So you'd use fan surface afterwards. Is that all right? <clears throat> Another thing you're looking for is things like where the two pieces of timber meet. So some people say, oh, well, that looks like a black gap. Well, it does, but it's not on an internal. It has to be on an internal to fill the cork. Okay. Is there any questions on that? No? So that's your polyfiller. And if, when you've sanded it, <coughs> excuse me, and you've given it its, its first coat of undercoat, then you might see more little indentations. And that's where your found surface comes in. So, and they would be really fine little bits, little scratches, tiny little bits like that. Now, when you get this fan surface, you notice it's in a tub. That is quite expensive. So it's an expensive way of filling. If you take the lid off, take your filler and don't put the lid back on, what's gonna happen? It's all gonna dry out, yeah. So the best thing, we can do really is if you need fan surface just ask Gary. <coughs> Gary will take the lid off, he'll give you a little bit, okay, he'll put the lid on, he'll keep this in the stores and then you can obviously if you've got a bit pass it on to someone else till it's gone. Okay, rather than us all getting a dollar using too much and then I'm leaving the lid off. Alright, because it is quite expensive. Okay, so are we okay with fan? Where we use fan surface filler, <coughs> excuse me, where we use cork and where we use polyfiller. Yeah, good, huh? Right then, that's the end of that. Thank you, Angel.